20 bucks at all of those stores. So as such, it's, it's also got a lot of the common features. So it's got, uh, if we just look at the tech specs, it's got, um, of course, it's got simultaneous dual band Wi-Fi, like I, like I mentioned earlier. It's got 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. It's got implicit and X. This router looks similar to some of Netgear's other routers that they offer. Uh, the R7000 comes to mind. This is a beefy router, so if you're looking for a low profile, this is not the one. Um, and traditionally, Netgear doesn't really have a lot of routers in the AC, wireless AC category that are uh, compact or sleek in design. Um, this one has got the, uh, the LEDs on top here, the power LED, the internet status, whether you're connecting at 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. These are your USBs. It's got one USB 3.0 slot up port, and then this is for your two USB 2.0 or legacy USB. Then it's got the LEDs that let you know if there's a wired connection in there, the wireless LED, and then the WPS. Um, these are your preset wireless settings here. You can scan this for more um, to connect your mobile device directly to uh, the wireless router. Um, these are the three dipole antennas, They're nice and sturdy. They rotate in many directions, you know, uh, unidirectional. If you look at the back, here's your power uh, receptacle here power on and off. This is a handy feature. Previously, a lot of routers didn't have this. And some some newer routers don't even have a power off button, but this is a handy feature if you don't want to always unplug the router to turn it off. Here's a USB 2.0 slot. Um, this is for if you're connecting up a USB 2.0 printer or, you know, any kind of uh, device that doesn't require, you know, uh, high data traffic. And I'll explain that a little later. This is your internet connection. You'll plug in your ISP uh, from your ISP device, whether it's a DSL modem, a cable modem, or otherwise, you'll plug that from, from there to here. These are your wired ports. So if you have a PC or some other device like a printer or something that requires a wired port where you plug in, you plug one end into your device and the other end into the, one of these ports in the back of the router. This is the uh, reset button. So again, you just if you need to reset it for a quick reset, you just get a, 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 a toothpick or paper clip or something like that and then you know push that in that button in there hold it for about seven seconds so to reset to, to completely reset your router all the way to factory defaults you're gonna press and hold that for about a minute anywhere between 30 seconds to a minute the USB 3.0 port is on the front so this is for primarily your storage devices so if you have um, an external hard drive that's got all your media on it or a network attached storage. You want to plug it in here to get the high speed data transfer to be able to do all of your, your HD streaming. I will mention this router is perfect for HD streaming and um, you can probably connect up to about 20 devices to it without experiencing any, uh, de any degradation in the quality of your connection or the data streams going through the router. So let's see what else is in this box. Here's your quick start guide. Don't need that because you have me. Here's your uh, Ethernet cable to connect between your router and your ISP connection. And then power supply. Standard stuff. So that completes the unboxing piece. Let's go on and get this bad boy connected and powered up and see where we can go from here. If you've reached a stage, that means you've gotten your router powered up 
and you got to connect it to your ISP connection and finally you've got your uh, configuring device either connected wirelessly or wired to the wireless router this page here is what you get when you uh, immediately launch your browser once your PC is connected to the router for the first time if this page doesn't show up you can just connect to 192.168.1.1 and that will bring up the same page so let's get started here select router mode and then click next on this screen this is asking you if you're if you're able to disable the built-in Wi-Fi on your uh, ISP provided router whether it's a cable modem from the cable company or DSL modem typically those boxes come built in with uh, wireless connectivity and if that's the case you want to go ahead and disable that so if you know how to do it go on and log into the device first thing you want to do is um, record the password for the wireless connection and also your SSID, the network IDs for your uh, wireless connection. We're going to write that down because we're going to use that to configure this uh, wireless router. Okay, <clears throat> so if you need to call the ISP to help get help with disabling your Wi Fi in there, go on and do that. Once you've done that, click yes, and it'll, it'll show you here how to connect your uh, wireless router to your. Um, existing ISP provided device sometimes you won't have wireless wireless connectivity in your ISP provided device if your ISP provided router or cable modem does not have built-in Wi-Fi that's fine you'll just set up a completely new uh, wireless network name and password for your 2.4 gigahertz wireless and your 5 gigahertz wireless once you've disabled that wireless connection on your ISP provided device and you've copied over, you've, you, you saved or copied that wireless uh, connection info, we're going to use that to populate here. So here you can see you've got the 2.4 gigahertz wireless network SSID and the password is associated. You've also got the 5 gigahertz wireless network ID, SSID and a 5 gigahertz password. What, what we want to do is we want to type the uh, same information that we were using for the ISP provided wireless connection in here. So for your 2.4 gigahertz, I'm just going to type in here my home one and the associated password. Okay. Um, for your 5 gigahertz connection, just copy it over. The copy of the 2.4 gigahertz wireless network SSID and um, paste it. Typically, it's going to be the same as 2.4 gigahertz with 5G attached to it. This is how I'm doing it. Whatever your ISP provided Wi Fi connection was, that's what you're going to use. So once you click next, it'll come to a confirmation page here where you just want to confirm your choice, select finish and the router should um, go through a reboot sequence. So once you get back to this page after the, after the initial reboot, don't be alarmed. It looks like the original setup, but it is indeed different. Um, the first half of the setup is where we configure the Wi-Fi. The, the, wi the second half of the setup is where we actually get to the internet. So both parts look similar. For this one, we're also going to do let me choose and also select router mode and next. Here, you're going to select no instead of yes to, con to continue. It'll display this message when you click on no. That's okay. Just click next to move through that. It'll, it'll display this message next. Checking the internet connection. Please wait. And from there, it'll display this menu or this option, which is uh, configuring the admin account settings. So two things you want to do, you want to choose a secure password that you can remember, but that's not too complex because you don't want to end up forgetting it. Um, and then the next thing you want to do is choose two security questions. 
Now, <clears throat> the reason they choose, they have you choose two security questions is one of the neat and unique features of this Netgear platform. That is a password reset function. Netgear is the only routing platform in, in the aftermarket um, consumer based routers that I've seen where they, they allow you to reset your password if you forget it without having to reset the entire modem or the entire uh, router. That's an awesome feature because oftentimes you configured um, all different types of settings. You've added hard drives and added um, printers and things like that and, and game settings and other you know personalization um, options to your wireless router and you don't want to lose those so that's a good option here so make sure you choose questions that you can answer but that you know are complex enough that someone someone can't guess it once you select next put this congratulations uh, confirmation pages here I suggest you print it and save it somewhere or take a screenshot or copy and paste it just put it somewhere safe where you can get you can get to it if you need it this one here download the following router apps this is if you want to uh, manage the ready share function on your wireless router you don't have to follow this step you don't have to do that so if you click next it'll take you to the firmware upgrade assistant this is automatic um, what it does is it goes out to the Netgear servers and it downloads it checks to make sure you have the latest version of the router firmware if it that if you if this right if your router doesn't have the latest version as it says here it'll go on and download the latest version and install that for you So if you get to this screen, this is confirmation of success. All of your hard work is, is paid off. You see the internet uh, widget there. It says status good. That means your router is connected to the internet and you're free to browse and surf as you like. The widget that says wireless, that displays your uh, wireless network SSID info and your password info. And that also means that your wireless devices should be attached to your um, Netgear router at this time. The next widget just displays the number of devices that are connected. So at this point, we're going to conclude this up and running video. I hope you enjoyed it. We've got a video manual that goes with this particular router platform. Also in our video library, we also have a Wi-Fi best practices uh, video that we've prepared f just for general um, connectivity with wireless devices but it's also based on this router platform so a good bit of information for those of you who are lay persons who are um, not necessarily technically savvy but you know have this router and you want to you want to know the best methods to configure it and get it up and running hope you like the video don't forget to like and subscribe before you sign off until next time